Hi there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled, Use the Pipeline, Not an Array. My name is Tim Warner, and I'll be your instructor. In this video series, we're working through every entry in the free ebook, The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas, from the DevOps Collective. You can find this book online by navigating to the short URL I provide below, or you could simply use your favorite search engine. Today we're covering element 16, called Use the Pipeline, Not an Array. Before we get into the code, let's define a couple fundamental related terms. The first of which is an array. What is an array? In terms of programming or scripting languages, an array is simply a list of data items, where you define an ordinary variable that contains a single data element, an array simply has more than one. For instance, in PowerShell, we can use the shorthand notation at parentheses to give a comma-separated list of values, even those of different data types, as you see here. We then can access the members of the R variable, looking at its count, and you'll see that the item count is four, one for each element. That's different from the hash table construction in PowerShell. That uses the at curly brace construction, and a hash table is called an associative array, where you have key value pairs. Notice the equal sign, so that if we look at the count property of this hash variable, it actually comes back two instead of four. The pipeline is a core concept of Windows PowerShell. In the pipeline, we have the output of the first clause becoming the input of the second. And we use the pipe character on the keyboard in order to do that. This is the key above enter on your keyboard, hold shift, you create the pipe. Now we compare the Windows PowerShell pipeline with that of shell scripting in Unix, Linux, or even to a degree Windows, in which the output there is plain text. Here in Windows PowerShell, the pipeline data is actually object-oriented, so that you have members of those objects. And moreover, the Windows PowerShell pipeline output is cumulative. You can grab the data and take action on it, regardless of where you are in that pipeline. Now let's turn our attention to the code. Now then, our script in use today is called Array.ps1. You can download it from my website. I'll give you the URL at the conclusion of this presentation. I normally just give metadata in the top part of my scripts, including a link to the big book of PowerShell gotchas. The actual concepts here, let me adjust the split bar, involve the use of an array versus just the naked PowerShell pipeline. In my first region here, I've created a simple function called getBiosArray that has a single parameter defined on line 28. Notice that the computer name parameter uses the array nomenclature, the internal square brackets. This means that we can pass multiple computer names to this function. That's one of the things that Windows PowerShell does especially well, is batch operations on multiple target nodes. Line 31 is really the main deal here. The idea is that if you're coming to Windows PowerShell with experience with full-fledged programming languages, maybe you've done a lot of work in Python, for instance, then the way you're used to gathering output is to define an empty array, which we can do legally here in PowerShell. We create a variable called output that uses at empty parentheses. And then you notice down further in the code, we have the increment operator on line 40, where we're taking the results of the empty array and gradually adding data to it. That's what lines 40 and 41 are doing. And notice that in the main body of the function, we're first of all running a for each loop to iterate through any computer names that we've passed into the function. And then in our try block, we're going to run get sim instance against the computer name and gather some properties from that get sim instance call. And then using the pipeline here, we're going to select out only the PS computer name and the serial number properties. Now there's some other things going on here that I want to make sure to explain if you're new to PowerShell. You'll notice that instead of using get sim instance with all of the parameters declared individually, how you may be used to doing it, we're using a shorthand notation. It's actually a technique called splatting, where we create a variable that includes a hash table. Again, the hash table is an associative key value pair array that uses the at curly brace syntax, and we have various key equal value pairings. And what you're doing here, the trick, 
is that your keys have to map to valid parameters of a given commandlet. In this case, class name is get sim instance, and we're going into Win32 BIOS. The computer name parameter of get sim instance, we're going to pass in the comp variable as we work through our for each loop. And then we're defining error action and an error variable so that if anything goes wrong during this get sim instance, we can catch that and write a warning message down below. As a matter of fact, note that my use of X instead of $X actually maps to another related PowerShell gotcha. Make sure to check out our full library of videos on our PowerShell org YouTube channel for more information. Now the splatting comes in because we're able to just run a commandlet and then call the previously defined variable, but instead of using the dollar sign, you use the at sign. This is just one of those price of admission things in Windows PowerShell where at first it may not make much sense, but over time it will. It's just a shorthand, nice way to pass a whole bunch of parameters and values to a commandlet. Ultimately, the loop will work, it'll do its work, and at the end of the process, output will contain all of that data based on the number of computers that you've passed into the function, and ultimately we have a right output where we display the results. Now this will actually work. Let me scroll out by using the control key and the mouse wheel, and I'm doing that so I can select all of these lines and then use F8 or the run selection button to actually run the command. Let's call it now against the local host explicitly by putting our cursor in line 52, and it gives us back the information we expect. Now the point here isn't the underlying code. This is really just toy code. The idea is that it works by using this empty array, but it's not anywhere near as efficient as just using the pipeline itself. And you can get information on this if you want by on line 54, notice that I'm taking a measure command and then in the expression use our get BIOS array call. And then if we select out just the milliseconds property that can tell us how long it took to run that particular function. And it looks like it took 10 milliseconds. Now this may not be particularly huge in this case because I'm just running against the local host, but what if we were running against a couple dozen servers? You see what I mean? So in summary, although you may have some past programming experience and may think that starting with an empty array and then gradually building it is a good idea, it's really not in Windows PowerShell. First of all, remember that Windows PowerShell is not an honest-to-goodness programming language. Instead, it's an interpreted scripting language. It's an automation, an administrative automation task engine environment. And you're much better off by just taking advantage of the raw PowerShell pipeline. Let's take a look at region two in the script. At first blush, this looks like the same function. I'm calling it get BIOS pipeline instead. And you'll notice that I renamed all of my variables because I didn't want to interrupt any that were previously defined just in case we need them. Anyway, you'll notice that we're not creating an empty array here, but instead we're simply using for each along with our call to get sim instance. We're using the same splatting method to pass in our parameters and values and the same catch write warning block. Instead of having to force PowerShell to wait to give you your results, it can do it immediately. And that's actually something I forgot to mention up above in our previous function, that when you do this empty array business, you have to wait for PowerShell to do all of its work and gather the full output before it's given at the end of the function. Why do that when you can take advantage of the pipeline and gather the information all at once? Let's select this function definition load it into our run space. And if we run get BIOS pipeline, the initial results are exactly the same. If we run measure command, it tells us eight seconds instead of 10. Once again, it's faster to do it this way with just the naked pipeline. And although the results aren't earth shattering here against the local host, I would defy you to try this against a wider range of systems, especially those that have different latencies to your administrative workstation. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can download the PowerShell script that I used in the demo from my website. It's timwarnertech.com forward slash array dot zip, A-R-R-A-Y. The videos for this series are at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. 
The community site for PowerShell.org uses that very URL. And if you want to reach me for any reason, my professional email address is timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. I'm also on Twitter at TechTrainerTim, and you can find me at LinkedIn as well. Thanks again, and happy PowerShelling.